All right, guys, today uh, we got a lot of stuff to uh, do, obviously, <laughs> if we want to try to start our car in 30 days like we planned. We're already on day 15 or 16, right? Is today the 16th? Don't know. Don't know? One of those two. Okay, so first thing, this distributor is endless fun, and it turns out the drive gear on the bottom of it is, uh, hold on, let me uh, hold this a little bit better so I don't make you guys nauseous. <laughs> the drive gear on this is a little pitted, so we got fancy new drive gear and um, it's punched in and like kind of pressed so we're just gonna bring it to a machine shop so we don't destroy this distributor because like we said 500,000 times it's worth a thousand dollars and we really don't want to buy another one yeah yesterday we also took the time to legitimately clean the garage uh, we went through everything and in doing that we have an entire truck bed filled with garbage so we're on the way right now to uh, the recycling center to toss some of that stuff uh, the machine shop we might stop by uh, Tractor Supply Company to look at some stuff uh, regarding the O2 sensor, but lots of driving today. We might get a kegerator. <laughs> That'd be maybe. a perfect addition to the garage. Uh, um, maybe not today, but... Or maybe today, who knows? Maybe today. I'm gonna swing by Best Buy or something. Home appliance section, get a kegerator. Uh, yeah, so we got a lot of driving and a lot of doing. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna actually do it. So, want to keep on track with the 30 days. There can be no breaks. Okay, we're back in the garage. Obviously, uh, let's show you guys. I mean, it's probably not that cool to you guys, but it's cool to us. As we literally organized and cleaned everything. Uh, the toolbox is all set. The big the thing. Shelf over there. Yeah, this is the big thing. Is how are these organized? Uh, they're Porsche parts that we're probably going to use, Porsche parts that we're definitely not going to use, and then miscellaneous parts that we didn't want to toss just yet because they may be valuable or stuff like that. And then we got a box of all 240Z stuff, we got a box of Jeep stuff, and all the unnecessary crap went into the, uh, the junkyard today. So, it's pretty sweet. So basically we have a lot more room to work. All right, but here comes all of the negativeness and the bad news that just seems to plague us sometimes. Oh, okay, this thing is just a gigantic piece of crap. Look at this, just look how awful it is. If you look at the connector, that's not it. There it is. If you look in there, there's pieces of plastic because the, uh, the female side of the connector for the uh, the spark output, I think it is, that green wire, that it, whatever it connects to. There's pieces of it broken off in there and we can't get the Allens off to get you know to that and clean it. Um, this whole thing just looks like it's been underwater. We brought it to the machine shop today. That's exactly what they said. They go, man, this thing looks awful. It looks like it's been underwater. Uh, they basically didn't want to mess with it. They, were, they would switch out this gear. They wouldn't do anything else for us. Um, basically, I think we're going to backtrack. I mean, it's kind of moving forward. The EDIS is a better system. Yeah. We were going to do that anyway, but, you know, for first start and ease of doing everything quickly, we were going to go with the distributor, but we're just going to say screw it. Basically, it seems like we're forced to go with um, EDIS, which is the Ford. Uh, it uses a tooth wheel and a VR sensor to control spark. And the issue that we had with that was our mega score is MS1 and that doesn't support that. So we would need to upgrade to MS2 or go with, uh, what the hell is the other one called? Mega Jolt. Mega Jolt. Um, at this point, we're basically looking for any help in regards to those. It's the ignition map that we're after for 3.0 SC. Um, we, we're familiar with Tuner Studio and how to uh, tune fuel maps, but the, the ignition map is just completely new to us. And uh, that's kind of what's been scaring us away from it. We, we're sure we could wire everything up. That's not the problem. It's uh, it's getting it running without an ignition map. Uh, so I've reached out to a few people online about getting one that's good enough to get the car started, but we still might need help tuning that. Basically, if you live near San Diego or you could hit us up on email and help us out with that, that'd be great. But we're basically forced to get rid of this distributor. Uh, it's a big pile of shit, so. That's holding up literally everything at this point. Because if we're gonna go with the VR and the tooth wheel, we're not gonna put this in the car because then we won't be able to get the, you know, we're not gonna be able to get the crank pulley, the crank pulley off. So this isn't going in the car today like we had originally planned. Um, we need a place to mount the Edis 
uh, thing. We need to go get Crown Vic spark plug wires. It's basically just this big, stupid, messed up thing, and it's really eating into our 30-day challenge, which sucks. I still think we can do it. I think we could do it. I'm not saying we can't do it. It's we just need to work really hard at this. And there's a lot of shit we need to do that might not be the most entertaining to watch. Yeah, as far as like the the wiring goes, it's going to take us a little bit to figure out, you know, the exact stock wiring and then how to link that all with the Mega Squirt and the Edis uh all in unison. So, that's going to be a little bit of time, at least a few days. Um and then, you know, this is situation just leads to ordering more parts so we're going to be waiting on parts for a little while as well yeah as far as parts go we need a 36 minus one uh crank trigger like toothed wheel thing we need a vr sensor off of ford focus which we're going to go pick up we need crown vic wires we need either an ms2 upgrade or a uh, mega jolt um we might need to change the msd that we ordered i don't know if we could use the MTB one or whatever it is, or do we need to switch to the 6AL? Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we need to figure out, and uh, we'll film as much of it as you guys find entertaining. I, I don't know. Um, we considered doing a garage cleaning time lapse, but who the know? Who? <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys would have wanted to watch that. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> it was just us throwing everything on the ground and then putting it back on the shelves. <laughs> Okay, so Edis. This is that. Whoops. And it is also this. Uh, are we just gonna do it? Yeah. Why not? Mm. Got a few more things to get, but we'll shoot down to O'Reilly's and see what they can order up for us and. If we can't get anything in time, we'll consider checking out a junkyard. We got two weeks, less than two weeks. We have 13 days. Got this. Here's what's left to do. Plug wires, E to six, spark plugs, mega jolt, or MS2, Hall effects, or not Hall effect, that, that should say VR sensor, Devin. Wide band relocation, uh, thanks for pointing out that the back pressure would destroy, well not destroy, but it would make our wide band inaccurate, so we are gonna move that. Uh, flywheel bolts, 36 to 1, uh, crank stuff. <laughs> the We need we now need a 3-inch V-band down pipe for the AHX35. If we want to put the bung for the O2 sensor after the turbo, which we have to do, so we need to figure this out before the 30th. Um, the AHX35 output elbow, it doesn't, that's, that's a whole separate thing. The CV boots, which we have, and we need to figure out the stock wiring harness. Uh, there's definitely more to this list, but this is a minimum of things that need to get done. I'm ordering parts. I am too. We're dual part ordering to save time right now. That's what this has come down to. <laughs> Can't order parts by yourself fast enough. This poster that we picked up in our old garage, Doubles Great, is a dry erase board, so that's exactly what we're going to use it for. Whether or not we actually finish anything on this to-do list is up in the air. <laughs> Oh fuck, he just almost killed me stool. Okay, so one of the first things we're gonna have to do is get rid of the stock crank pulley. Uh, obviously this doesn't have the tooth wheel on it and uh, VR sensor is not gonna pick up anything. So we're gonna pull this off, which is also connected to our turbo via this bracket. We're gonna pull that off. Uh, we gotta finish those gauges and I begin uh, sorting this shit out. That CV joint, I guess that doesn't need to be done today, but we have to do things that we have here uh, so we're gonna get caught up with all this stuff last minute. What? <laughs> oh, the camera? The lens? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've been spending the last 20 minutes or so looking at connections on that. Now correct us if, our, if we are wrong, but we think the wiring about uh, Mega Jolt would be easier than upgrading the, our daughter board to MS2 and then trying to rework our wiring harness to accommodate EDIS where we can just get Mega Jolt completely separately um, yeah. which seems a little bit less convenient, but it, it, to us, it seems like it's easier to wire. We just have to run separate wires as opposed to running wires through this already done up nice wiring harness and then soldering into the pins up there. It's just going to be way more complicated, way more difficult. We'd have to cut this whole thing open. So 
Might as well just wire separately anyways. They had this thing on manual focus the whole time and I was like, why does Devin look like shit? <laughs> Uh, basically all that we can really do today is start setting things up for all this nonsense and uh, I mean, we gotta pull we gotta pull that off like I was talking about I keep forgetting what things are called because I'm so freaking exhausted from trying to figure all this out crank fully and cover <laughs> so apparently when we do why this, did we say we'd have this done in 30 days uh, we'll make it happen <laughs> we want it to run just as much as you guys I already explained this. Let's just let's just take it off. Yeah, just fuck it. Fuck it. We're just gonna tear shit apart. We got a little to-do list up here. Yeah, there's things we can do at the moment. Figuring out stock wiring is not something you guys are gonna want to watch because nothing will literally be happen happening. But Devin just sitting there and just sorting things out. And Sit there with a big old wiring diagram and just clean wires and figure out which color is which. In the meantime, let's tear some stuff apart. When you're building life as you down in general, you always have a friend. It's pizza. Oh. Oh my. You get such a big pizzas for two people. Whoa, man. <laughs> like, pizza is like the greatest thing ever. You're right, it's almost better cold. Oh, good girl, don't crap yourself. Don't <laughs> don't have aggressive diarrhea that's difficult to pick up tomorrow. Yeah, she tries to eat the whole thing at once. Oh, that didn't work very good now, did it? No, no, no. Is it fire as always, Rosie? It looks to be that way. <laughs> I think she thinks it's fire, as always. <laughs> She doesn't get human food often, but when, you know, sometimes it's good to give her a nice treat. Doesn't hurt her. Look how clean and silky this coat is. <laughs> That's a healthy ass dog. Have you guys ever seen this before? The last person to put tires on these and get them balanced, they put the weights on the inside of the, uh, the lip here, which just looks completely awful. <laughs> it ruins these. I'm almost positive they're supposed to put them on the inside. I've actually never seen this done, so. I'm gonna have to take those off and get it rebalanced. Dog, there's no more pizza over here. <laughs> get the hell out of here. That's why we don't give you human food because you turn. Pizza once and she's, yeah, she's, she's like feeding. freaking out. It's in her eyes. She's like, eh. Uh, but your fingers still smell like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we're gonna take this off and take this off and take this off. And then uh, Dem and I are gonna spend some time uh, planning out this whole wiring fiasco that's gonna have to go down. Yeah, that's gonna be the next few days. <laughs> I have no idea how long this video is already. Again, this is just a lot of us talking about what needs to be done to get this to work. Because we're planning this in real time. It is literally, we post the videos typically the same day that we film them. So it is the 15th or 16th day of the 30 day. Uh, right here, this box, this gets replaced with the uh, MSD. I think we're switching to 6AL. We have the other one that has ignition. Uh, retard capabilities, but we're not going to need that if we go with Mega Joule or MS2. So we're going to return that and get the 6AL. We're still figuring everything out, but we got two weeks. Progress. We're making it. The garage is clean. There's pizza. Yep. Uh, we have kind of a clear direction where we want to go. I mean, basically, this engine's done. It's complete. It's it's uh, it's done. It's just we need to figure out what we want to do with the freaking ignition and it's this thing's fault it's this this is like 100 percent the reason why this isn't in the car and getting the intercooler piped right now it is what it is we got we still got two weeks look at this new clutch it's not performance or anything but it should be good enough it's so fresh and so clean i think the 915 would blow up way before that slips so Oh, we got an engine for the Jeep. I don't know if we showed you that in the last video, but... I think we talked about it. I don't know. I'm not sure if we did. I mean, it looks like this is the scope of what we got done today. <laughs> That's taking off this one bolt, or my bad, two, two bolts. Two bolts, man. Two and, bolts. And the crank pulley. But, we did a lot of figuring and parts ordering. You saw that dual part ordering action earlier. 
We also ate a pizza, and we have a much clearer idea of where we're going. <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, the figuring and parts ordering took a few hours. Most of our daylight. Yeah, we have like a whole notebook page worth of crap jotted down. Um, we we're trying. We're trying not to stress about this whole 30-day thing. And a lot of what we did today was essential to getting that done. I was able to get a. Um, I was able to get a base timing map off a of 3.2, um, which is close enough to ours to get it running, and uh, that'll be good enough until we can get it to a dyno. But uh, we just really want to get it started and idling by the end of the month. So, emailed the people we needed to order the parts we need to. Uh, impact gun that off because we can't. Yeah, obviously. Wow, it is a 17. It is a 17. Cool. I hope you guys don't mind videos like this. This is part of building when you are just two guys in a garage. Oh, that was easy. Look at that. Work's done for the day. Yeah, kind of. We got to finish those gauges, but you guys saw us install those. All we're really going to do is finalize everything and bolt it down. But, uh, all right, so our crank pulley, let me see that real quick. Basically, the new one is going to have 36 teeth minus one, so one of them has been removed, and there's going to be a VR sensor or a crank sensor that when this thing's spinning, it's going to basically tell our computer exactly what a distributor would tell it. Um, it's going to look the same to the computer and it's gonna know the position of the crankshaft based on the teeth that are on this. I think the VR sensor is a magnet and it just, uh, it gets, you know, it gets a signal every time one of those teeth pass it and that's how that works. Every time the gap passes it, it says they went a full rotation, so. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah. And it's in the long term, there's more tuning capabilities and it's more reliable and it's safer than a distributor that has 230,000 miles on it. And potentially doesn't work, period. We don't know if it works, and that would be a real buzzkill if we got everything done in, in 30 days and then it, it just didn't work, so. That's that. All right guys, so today's original plan was to get the transmission on the engine and potentially get the engine inside of the car, but we don't want to do that right now because we can't uh, easily get the crank pulley off without uh, having the engine out of the car, I mean, we could drill holes and shit and like, we can do it, but it's easier to keep the engine on the stand until we figure out this ignition situation. Yeah, our, our entire direction for finishing up uh, this motor is completely changed. We now have a new game plan, it's completely different from before, but I think we're still on track for that 30 day mark. We talked a lot about it today, and it looks like between the MS2 or the, uh, what's it called? I always forget, Mega Joel. Mega Joel. The easiest solution as far as wiring goes is to have the fuel only set up like we plan to do and in place of the distributor just use Mega Jolt because that's super super easy to wire. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to do. I got a base ignition map um, that should get the car started and um, I think we can do all this in two weeks. So uh, like I said earlier, I hope you guys don't mind videos like this. This is the reality of building a car and um, as long as you guys like it, the, uh, the multiple videos a week. Uh, sometimes the video is going to have to be like this. In some people's eyes, in our eyes, it's, there's definitely a lot of material here to post. It's, uh, sometimes your build just takes an unexpected turn like ours did today. We planned for this a few, uh, a few weeks ago when we went to the junkyard and got some of the parts we need. So that definitely helps. But, um, <laughs> this dog is just licking the floor. But we actually have to commit to it now because just the, the, the most frustrating part of this whole thing, and I'm, I'm getting frustrated just thinking about it, I'm looking at it right now, is that freaking distributor, and it's just, it makes no sense. It's, you know, we went to the machine shop today, what did they tell you when they saw it? Uh, I showed them the distributor, and uh, the guy looked at it initially, and he goes, oh wow, it's real chewed up down here, it looks like this thing's been underwater, but it's not been underwater, because there's no rust on it or anything. And uh, he said, you, you've been working on this? and I obviously told him no, but I explained how expensive these things are, and he was extremely surprised, as as were we when we found that out. So I was like, I'm trying my best to salvage this one. And he's gave me some advice on it, but ultimately said it looked like a piece of shit. Yeah. So basically, why would we spend like probably way more money and time trying to get a system that's inferior to um, a computer-controlled ignition? Uh, to work when we could just swap over to modern uh, modern ignition uh, stuff. <laughs>
It's, it's been a long day. Yeah, we're going with the modern nation stuff. That's what this whole outro has been about, is uh, trying to explain what happened today. Uh, we kind of knew it was going to happen weeks ago, and we should have just stayed on course, but then we thought it would be easier to keep the distributor, and it turns out it's not easier, and even if we got it to work, it might not work because that might be broken, so... Yeah. Uh, it totally would have been easier if we had a decent distributor, but ours is just garbage, and we're just going to do all this work, and it's just not going to work, so... And there's some on eBay that are $700, and they're like, parts distributors are like, good candidates for restoration, and this is clearly not a uh, <laughs> an original build anymore. This is now like a Frank. It's got a, it's got a tractor turbo on it, so we don't really care about keeping the uh, you know everything how it came out of the factory. So now it's going to have a tractor turbo and a Ford Edis um, ignition system. Fun times. So we're going to wrap this one up and pick a winner for this video's giveaway. Um, if you're unfamiliar with our channel, we give away products from BoostedShades.com every single video. Even if you guys don't win, please head over to BoostedShades.com. That's how we have the money to build these builds. If you like what we're doing here, you can support us via BoostedShades.com. All right, this video's winner is Jeff Bergen. Okay, Jeff, you can hit us up at Team Boosted at BoostedShades.com or through any of our social media platforms. A piece of light. I got like a, I got like a red pattern in my throat. It's like really messing me up. I'm <coughs> super red pepper, dude. Adding more beer. It's one of those that beer. Wait, sorry, guys. I had a red pepper in my throat, and we will <laughs> should have gotten that kegerator today. <laughs> Shoulda, coulda, woulda. If you're interested in winning the giveaways, all you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, the comments. Don't have to be related to our question at the end. Sometimes we ask a question at the end. Any comment is eligible. Uh, this video's question, um, as you can see, sometimes we do random ask questions, and behind us we have a bunch, we have a wide selection of hot sauces because one isn't good enough. Uh, my personal favorite is Tabasco, just straight up OG Tabasco. Uh, close second is Red Hot, Frank's Red Hot Classic as well. I'm a Cholula guy, I love the garlic. Our question is, what's your favorite type of hot sauce? There's a billion of them, so I'm sure there, you guys have some that we've probably never heard of. Uh, yeah, I like asking not car related stuff sometimes. Yeah. It's always interesting to see your answers. Um, that's going to do it for this one. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.